Hello and welcome to KRC's Dream Podcast, where we talk about politics, share stories from our community, and also provide practical advice. We will be podcasting every week, so please tune in. You can also access information on our website at www.krcla.org slash show, or find us on YouTube at krcla.org. This is Jenny again, and I'm back with an exciting show for you. This week's focus is on the Senate's Immigration Reform Bill. But first, we have a special guest today. His name is Kevin Lee. He's the Special Projects Organizer at the Korean Resource Center. Hi, Jenny. Thanks for having me here. No, thanks for coming again. So we have a lot of questions about AB 540. I know that you're the expert. So one of the questions that I get is they understand the eligibility, but also how to fill out the forms. Yes. Um, first, as you may know, there are three qualifications for the AB 540 and state tuition law. Three? What are they? The first is that you have to have uh, been through the California high school system for three years or over. Three years. Do they have to be consecutive three years? No, it does not have to be consecutive three years, but it just has to be uh, three full academic years. So like freshman year, I can be in California. Sophomore year, I can be in, like, New York and then come back. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. And second is that one must have either graduated from high school or plans to graduate or have attained a GED equivalent of a high school diploma. Okay. And the last one, which is very important, is that uh, the person who's applying for the AB 540 has to be undocumented, which means that currently they do not have a lawful status in the United States. All right, so as long as you meet these three qualifications, you're eligible for in-state tuition, right? Yes, as an undocumented student. Okay, so um, how do you fill out these forms? I know a lot of people are in this situation and, and they qualify for AB 540. What do they need to do? Uh -huh. First, they have to print out the AB 540 form. Where do um, you get that? And there are many ways to get it. First, you can go on Google and actually search for AB 540 form, and it'll be the California Non-Resident Tuition Exemption Request right up top. So, Kevin, the California Non-Resident Tuition Exemption Request. Now, can you walk us through step-by-step -step on how to fill it out? Yes. The first question that they ask for this form is whether you have graduated from a California high school or have attained a GED that is equivalent, and you should check yes for this box. And another important part is when they ask, I have attended California high school for over three or more years, and you should check yes for this too. All right, those questions seem pretty easy. How about the next one? Provide information on all schools you attended grades 9 through 12. Um, this is pretty easy. It's just writing out your high school and from which month to which year you've attended to. All right, that's pretty easy too. The next one is a little confusing. It reads, I am a non-immigrant alien as defined by federal law, including but not limited to a foreign student, F visa, or exchange visitor. What is that? Yes, this actually means that you have status in the United States. You have a visa that is alive. Hold on. So if you got deferred action, is that a status as well? No, deferred action uh, does not grant you status. It only prevents you from being deported and just allows you as a temporary measure to work in the United States. Okay, so I don't have any alien status if I have deferred action. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is why you should check. Yes, for I am not a non-immigrant alien, which means that you're an undocumented person. So in the box it says, I am not a non-immigrant alien. That's the box I should check. Yes. All right, that sounds easy enough. Uh -huh. And one more thing, just to add, the other things are very self-explanatory, like printing, writing your name, your address, and your signature, but sometimes people get confused about the student identification number. All you have to write for that is just your high school student ID. All right, so it's a pretty simple form. I think the only thing that's confusing is checking those boxes, but now we know if you're undocumented and you got deferred action, you should mark, I am not a non-immigrant. Thanks, Kevin, for all your help today. Okay, no problem, Jenny. So in our next section brings us to the topic of the week, which is the Senate's Immigration Reform Bill. I'm really excited to see the bill come out on Wednesday. We were waiting all day that day for something to come out, and it finally did at 11.30 at night. So how did you feel, Kevin, when the bill was actually announced? I felt really excited, but also at the same time sort of concerned about what kind of provisions the bill would have. Right, me too. 
I was able to read some of the provisions. There's definitely good portions and definitely some pretty bad portions as well. But I know that a lot of people have commented on it and there's a lot of sources. Should we key in on one of the most important provisions for us, which is the DREAM Act? Um, what are what are some of the provisions indicate for dream dreamer students? Uh, as you may know, the DREAM Act provision within the Senate bill is one of the most broadest and the best dream provisions yet, and I am so excited. And this signals that both the Republicans and Democrats at least somewhat agree on this matter of immigration. I was also very encouraged to see that for dreamers, there is no age cap, meaning that all those people that we met during the clinics that wasn't it wasn't eligible for DACA is now available for the DREAM Act in this new Senate bill. So I'm really encouraged and happy. What else is in this DREAM Act? Right. Um, just to go over very briefly on the requirements, you have to have entered the United States before the age of 16. You have to have completed high school or obtained the GED, which allows you to apply for resident provisional status, which is a temporary status um, that uh, the dreamer would keep for five years, and there will be no penalty, unlike other applicants for the resident provisional status. And after the five years, the dreamer would be eligible to apply for legal permanent residency. Then immediately after, the dreamer would be able to apply for United States citizenship. So along with the DREAM Act provision, there's um, other other provisions in this bill that we won't go over today, but we will next week. There's a lot of questions in the community. For Korean Resource Center, what are some things that we can provide to the community next week? Next Tuesday, actually, on the 23rd at 6.30 in the afternoon, there will be a community meeting which will explain step-by-step -step many of the important provisions of the Senate bill that directly impacts our Korean American community. And we would also like to get input from our community members on how to go about in our response to this bill. So when is it again? Where is it located? It will be at the Korean Resource Center, 900 Crenshaw, between Crenshaw and Olympic. And it will be at Tuesday, the 23rd, at 6.30 in the afternoon. All right, I'm looking forward to the meeting. Thank you for coming by again, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the KRC Dream Podcast. We will be back next week with an exciting lineup, so stay tuned. Thanks. Yay!